I would like us to come with me to um, around about 2000 when the rest of the world and us were celebrating millennium and some of you were scared that the world was going to end. At that time, Uganda made not a decision to say the world was ending, but they made a decision to take on biotechnology. And I happened to be one of the team members that was working on an activity that was um, charged with the responsibility to lay the platform that would make sure that the matoke that we love to eat is not exterminated by disease. Because there are some, of the, some difficult uh, diseases like, for example, bacterial wilt, where we don't have resistance at all, not in any varieties in the world. So we would have to employ alternative technologies. And we wanted to employ biotechnology. Now, so this platform, um, I was with a, a team of three Ugandans. Now, the ones, I'm talking about the ones in the lab. But I was with Lois and Pamela. So we start on this journey and we were in the lab working almost late into the night. We had a, a lab full of experiments and petri dishes and days under the microscope for us to use the technologies in biotechnology we would need to reduce the banana plant i use the word reduce it's not like shrinking it but get so get reduce the plant to its body building blocks which we call cells and we would have to, to show that we can regrow this, the, the plant from the cells now, that was the problem. So we worked one year, two years, and three years down the road. I tell you what, the banana plant had refused. It didn't want to be reduced. We were running out of time. The pressure was getting too high. Accountability for money, for a product, for a system in place. And I was the team leader, I was the, the, um, the, the lead scientist for the team. And so my, my team leader called me to his office and threw the challenge into my face. I had been registered at Makere University for a master's degree. And I was challenged to take that on as my research project. So I, I accepted. I knew it was going to be difficult, but I knew I was also going to be starting from a psychological stage of failure because I had been part of the system, the, the team that was running for three years. I didn't know what I was going to do different, but I agreed that I would do it. Hmm. So I went into the lab, I set up experiments, and the thing was not working. One month, three months, six months, one year, again, the thing was not working. I was beginning to panic. I knew I had to deliver. But I felt like, mm -mm. this is not getting, this is not giving me what I am looking for. I ran, and I got myself another job. I passed the interview, but the director of the organization called and said he wanted to speak to me particularly. So I sat in his office and he looked at me and said, Priva, you are a clever girl. You have invested so much in what you have been doing. You are our best candidate, but we are not giving you the job. And he bluntly told me, Go back to Kawanda. You have a, a career there. We don't have a career for you here. Now you can imagine the frustration I had. The longest journey I probably had from Entebbe to Kampala. But on the way, there's something that came to my mind. And this is, this is uh, 
comes from part of my childhood growing up. One time my mother sent me for sugar from a cupboard. I went and tried to open this cupboard and it refused. You know, it refused. And so I couldn't open it. So I came to her and said, Mama, I covered the younger. And she looked at me and said, Yaku Jirangwench. <laughs> Through life, she has always challenged us that 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 cannot speak should not defeat you. So I, I came, you know, all these thoughts going through my mind. I had, a, I had a team of leaders that believed in me. They supported me. And here I was, I thought, after all, these bananas do not speak. So I came back into the lab. Um, I had moved close to the institute so that I could spend more time in the lab. I remember we spent a lot more time in prayer with my friend Jennifer. She wasn't able to come today. We prayed deeply about this. And I set up a few more experiments changed different things, read a lot more, and I waited. Four months later, I was in the, in, in the lab searching through the, 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 the plates and under the microscope and looking and looking. And for a moment, I was like, is that right? I looked again, is that right? I think the inside of me was panicking and I looked again. I, put, I, I went quickly and pulled out my camera just in case. So I pulled out the camera, I took a picture of this thing and I looked at it again and I was like, yes! Yes! <laughs> we got it. I quickly ran and, and I ran to, we call him Tush. Allow me to call you Tush. I ran to Tush and said, you know what? Yes, you have to come and see, you have to come and see. So he quickly left his magnificent office and ran down with me to the lab. And there it was. There it was. It was the right thing. You guys better clap, eh? <laughs> it was the right thing. It was the right thing that we had been looking for that we were not seeing. We had another colleague called Rose. Rose Gahaka was one of those people who loved party and every opportunity for party would be, you know, a, beer, a, a, a bottle of wine. So she, she got a bottle of wine and, and there was celebration and everybody got to know about it. That was just the starting point. The, I had to also go through the journey of proving that I have to get a plant that is exactly because I had started with a variety Say, for example, let me call it Nachibuzi, the ones you can identify with. Chibuzi, Mbazi Rume, Nachitembe. Fortunately, God had our prayers. It was not only getting this first step, but even the last step of getting the true plant of what the first variety was. We got it. So what does this mean? What does this mean for us? What does it mean? Scientists... I want to encourage you, scientists, I want to encourage young people who are in science, you can do it. It does not matter the steps of discouragement, you can do it. What that means is that, you know, it's like having fire in the kitchen. This is fire in the kitchen. The cook can cook anything now. The scientist, you can do you can, you can add anything, in, anything to improve the matoke. We have also established a training ground for younger people who are learning science in related aspects. But also what that means is, is that for a farmer in Masaka, in Kayunga, anywhere in this country who is growing Chibuzi and Bwazirume and Achitembe, when we have used this system, this fire, to improve a variety so that it can stand up to a disease like bacterial wool that would otherwise, you know, destroy these varieties and we lose them. We will still get back the same variety. But what that means for us who love to eat matoke, you know, is that you will go to the market and you'll find a variety of matoke and you'll be able to make your, to, to bargain and take home a bunch 
and you'll be able to eat and enjoy your delicious matoke. Um, just to let us know that for the pride of this nation and the pride of Africa, we are the only laboratory in the world that does this work on matoke. God bless you. Oh, oh, oh.